Hi folks, 3 8 inch Taz, the aluminum shredder Lakeshore Carbide, this time on the Tormach 1100. So we ran on the 770 last week. Let's see what happens. We're gonna start off with the exact same recipe, which I'm actually excited about. I know it'll work, and I've never really done any A-B testing between the 1100 and the 770. I will totally admit, I love the 770. I didn't used to be a fan. It's been great. With the bigger and thicker tools though, I'm guessing the 1100 is still gonna prevail. So let's work up a Spees and Beads recipe. Let's see how hard we can push this tool. It's a 3 8 inch tool. I think we may end this video pushing it to the limit and snapping it. We'll see. Welcome to another Wednesday Widget. Okay, so that went fine. We're gonna bump up the feed rate from six thou to seven and a half thou per tooth. That means we're going from about 82 to 102 inches a minute. And I really encourage this folks, quit using in inches per minute in Fusion 360 and use feed per tooth because that's how machinists talk and when you want to understand how to use a set up a tool or a feed and speed in a new material or a new machine or a new part that's what you care more about when we move over to the Haas and we start moving at 300 inches per minute I need to understand the chip per tooth here's the funny thing though I want to try this but I actually would rather increase the width of cut to increase our MRR and take advantage of the 1100 spindle and rigidity and horsepower Nevertheless, I want to try this. We're at about, I think it's 0.89 horsepower and about, I think, look at the Excel sheet, four and a half cubic inches. So not near, I want to definitely get to six. Well, we'll see what we get. Okay, so you guys heard the spindle struggle there. Let's see if we reduce the feed rate, but increase the width of cut to get the same material removal rate if we can get more performance out of this tool, because we should. Same material removal rate, about 4.6 cubic inches, about the same horsepower, but totally different cut. We're increasing to a 0.1 inch step over, but to keep that same MRR, material removal, we drop down the feed rate to four and a half thou per tooth, which is about 62 inches a minute. Let's see how this runs. Heard the spindle struggle, I don't like that. Why? Let's see if we can find more torque. Lower the RPMs. We'll go down to 3750 RPMs to keep the same material removal rate and do a direct comparison. We'll, that'll increase the chip load to 0.0 or five and a half thou per tooth, about 62 inches a minute. In other words, the same feed rate, just more chip load per tooth, less RPMs. Let's compare those, see how they sound. better oh that's awesome awesome so uh, much better at that lower rpm and that's the thing folks so many times with aluminum i am going to tell you to use all the rpms you've got but that's really for quarter inch tools and smaller when we get into bigger tools three eighth inch definitely half inch on the Tormach. got to take it easy to find that sweet spot so let's bump up the performance of this tool by increasing the feed rate or increasing the chip load per tooth. We're gonna to go 70 inches a minute, which is stepping up to a six and a quarter thou per tooth chip load. This is starting to get there, five and a quarter material removal rate. Uh, our card here to the shear hog video where I think we got about six cubic inches a minute. Totally different tool. We'll talk about that at the end of this video, the comparison. Let's see what we got. We did it, we got a little bit of tool pull out. I bet you that's my fault. Let me take a look. It's been a while since I adjusted or looked at this one. So I am not going to judge yet because I bet you I need to have this tighter. Because once you get this tightened down and you get it, you know, what you need to do is clean the tool with acetone and you need to keep the inside of your collet clean, but the outside of your collet needs to have a little bit of never seize on it. We did an old video, we should do a new one on it. Um, so I can tell you right now that's too loose. It just, it just falls out. So tighten her up. A lot of times it doesn't take much once you get it close. 
oh, too much. I can pull that out, but that's too tight. See down there, I just backed it off a little and now it falls out. Closer. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. Obviously, if you're using a tool changer, you need to be more concerned with ensuring positive tool release. Let's do that same cut again, and let's just prove that we don't get tool pull out or prove that I eat my words. Again, we're using that same thing we covered in the 770 steel video where it automatically updates Pathpilot settings. So I can just hit cycle start. It's already moved my Y axis back which makes it super easy when you're testing speeds and feeds like this. Really awesome. Good news and bad news. Good news is no pull out. Bad news is um, I'm not gonna run any harder than that. That's, that's all she's got just because I'm hearing, well, you know, that's what I said in the 770 video. It bogs the spindle down a little, but as long as it keeps it up, it doesn't get worse, we might be okay. Depends on what you're doing. Let's switch over to our sample part and let's test this out in a truly adaptive part. Same recipe that we just ran. It's three, 3750 RPMs and 70 inches a minute, 0.1 inch step over or optimal load. And then we're gonna try ramping in at 22 inches a minute. Like no problem at all, no problem. On the 770, we only ramped at 15 inches a minute. So 150% of that speed, total cycle time. 1 minute and 36 seconds, that compares with 2 minutes and 3 seconds on the 770. So that's about 22% faster. Uh, we're losing too much. i got to back it off. Now, that may not match exactly what happened, but it's a good comparison for what that toolpath can do for increased speed. Reduce the width of cut from 0.1 inch to 0.08 inches. Enjoy. We're not done yet. I'm still gonna try to break this tool. But the first thing I thought of when I saw this tool was shear hog. That's what I use to rough on aluminum these days. In fact, we used to use a tool like this from Meritool and I kind of stopped doing it. And the reason is that solid carbide is expensive and it's fragile. If you chip load it or you break a little corner, you've all of a sudden kind of rendered this tool worthless. But they really are totally different tools. The shear hog is about $200, but relatively inexp uh, inexpensive inserts. I gotta say they last forever. This tool is about $45. The difference though in this one that's the biggest difference to me is that this is a more versatile tool. It has a longer cutting flute length area so you can cut taller sidewalls. You know, we really don't cut much more than about 0.2 inch depth of cut on our shear hog. It's also a narrower diameter tool which is good for lower tool pressure and you're gonna get into tighter spots when you rough stuff out and to me that's really important because I can't always just move from a three quarter inch or one inch shear hog down to a quarter inch finish tool without doing more adaptive cleanup. I gotta say too, the chips coming off the Taz are tiny. I didn't care at all about that. I used to just say goodbye, don't care about chips, I'm a small shop. I all of a sudden really care about chips. Having them be a compact size uh, for hopefully you're recycling them, but even if you're throwing them away. Uh, aluminum is a good thing to recycle though. It really does matter. You're also gonna get better floor finish out of a tool like this, and I am blown away uh, at the ramping. That's what we're gonna try now. I'm gonna run this tool as hard as I can, ramping down faster at a higher angle, which to me is, is absolutely crazy. The final thing I'll mention, the shear hog has one thing that I've, I, I love it, but there's one thing, which is that because it's a single insert tool, it tends to be a more punishing tool. So what I find is you've got to make sure you've got really good work holding, really good vice table down, held down to your table, and it's just a loud tool. That has its drawbacks. You know, if you're doing a precarious part, the shear hog isn't always going to be as good to run it in there. So that's what I think uh, where this could be uh, useful. And then I'll say, be honest, on the Haas, I have I've used the shear hog less lately because it's actually just scary. It's so loud, it's so powerful. Um, I don't know, maybe that's just me. I also need to figure out why we're not getting more horsepower out of this. That's bothering me. And I, I suspect it's partially operator error, uh, but there's more I bet we can be doing. So with that folks, hope you enjoyed. 
Let's do some aggressive ramping and see where this ends up though. Take care, see you soon. Who's ready to see if we break this tool? This is crazy to me. It's 16 degrees, 20. This is 24 degrees. Oh my God. Wow. 28. 